For most of his life, Michael Jackson has been in the spotlight, most recently because of what has been described as bizarre behavior, bizarre behavior that has now led him to be charged with sexually molesting a 13-year-old boy. If convicted, he could spend 20 years in prison. Now out on bail and awaiting trial, tonight Michael Jackson speaks out for the first time about his arrest, his accuser, and the charges that have, for the moment, made his life a shambles. We sat down with Michael Jackson on Christmas Day at a hotel in Los Angeles, one of several cities where he has been in seclusion since authorities in Santa Barbara officially charged him with seven counts of sexual molestation and two counts of using an intoxicating agent reported to be alcohol to seduce the boy. What is your response to the, the allegations that were, were brought by the district attorney in Santa Barbara that you, you molested this boy? Totally false. Before I would hurt a child, I would slip my wrist. I would never hurt a child. This is totally false. I was outraged. I could never do something like that. This is a kid you knew? Yes. How would you characterize your relationship with this boy? I've helped many, many, many children, thousands of children, cancer kids, leukemia kids. This is one of many. Michael Jackson says his accuser is among thousands of children. He's invited to his 2,600-acre Neverland Ranch in California to play in his amusement park, visit his zoo, watch movies, play video games, and feast on their favorite foods. Tell me why you developed Neverland. Because I wanted to have a place that I could create everything that I, that I never had as a child. So you see rides, you see animals, there's a movie theater. I was always on tour traveling you know and uh, I never got a chance to do those things so I compensated for the loss by I have a good t I mean I can't go into a park I can't go to Disneyland as myself I can't go out and walk down the street there's crowds and bumper to bumper cars and so I create my world behind my gates everything that I love is behind those gates we have elephants and giraffes and crocodiles and every kind of tigers and lions and and we have busloads of kids who don't get to see those things they come up sick children and enjoy it mm -hmm. they enjoy it in a pure loving fun way it's people with a dirty mind that think like that i don't think that way that's not me and and do you think people look at you and think that way today if they have a sick mind yeah mm -hmm. and if they believe the trash they read newspapers yeah mm -hmm. And, and it's not just remember something just because it's in print doesn't mean it's the gospel mm -hmm. people write negative things because they feel that's what sells mm -hmm. good news to them doesn't sell and jackson says his relationship with this boy he first met a year ago was positive he says he was determined to help him with his battle against cancer so when when he would come over what what would he do? What would you do? I'll tell you exactly. Um, when I first saw him, he was totally bald-headed, white as snow from the chemotherapy, very bony, looked anorexic, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, and he was so weak, I would have to carry him from the house to the game room or push him in a wheelchair to try to give him a childhood, a life, because I felt bad because I never had that chance too as a child you know that, and so I know it, it it felt like in that way not being sick but not having had a childhood so my heart go out to those children I feel their pain Jackson says he tried to help in the healing process by taking the boy around the grounds of Neverland to Jackson's favorite places he had never really climbed a tree so I had this tree that I have at Neverland I call it my giving tree because I like to write songs up there. I've written many songs up there. So I said, you have to climb a tree. That's part of boyhood. You just got to do it. And uh, I helped him up. And once he went up, up the tree, we looked down on the branches. And it was so beautiful. It was magical. And he loved it. To give him a chance to have a life, you know? Because he was told he was going to die. They told him. They told his, his parents to prepare for his funeral. 
That's how bad it was. And I put him on a program. I've helped many children doing this. I put them on a mentor program. The boy, whose name and face we're not revealing, has credited Michael Jackson's friendship and support with helping him to battle his cancer. Isn't that great? Uh -huh. Not sick at all. No more cancer. And last February, in a British documentary that was filmed before the boy alleged he was sexually molested, he said that he had stayed overnight at Jackson's home many times and had slept in his bedroom. There was one night I stood in the yard and asked him if I could stay in the bedroom. He let me stay in the bedroom. And I was like, Michael, you can sleep, sleep on the bed. And he was like, no, 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 you sleep on the bed, sleep on the bed. We're like, no, 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 you know, you sleep, on, you sleep on the bed. And then he finally said, okay, if you love me, you sleep on the bed. I was like, oh, man. And so I finally slept on the bed. That comment, along with Michael Jackson's startling confession, that he had shared his bed many times with children spurred an investigation last February by the Los Angeles County Department of Children and Family Services, which interviewed the boy and his mother to determine whether he had been sexually molested by Michael Jackson. According to an agency memo, the child denied any form of sexual abuse, and the investigation by the sensitive case unit concluded the allegations of neglect and sexual abuse to be unfounded. Over the next several months, relations between the boy's family and Michael Jackson deteriorated. According to sources close to the family, the boy's mother had suspicions that Jackson was serving alcohol to her 13-year-old son who was still suffering from cancer. Eventually, she took her suspicions to the district attorney. And that led to a full-scale investigation by his office and the Santa Barbara County Sheriff. An arrest warrant for Mr. Jackson has been issued on multiple counts of child molestation. The bail amount on the warrant has been set at $3 million. If Michael Jackson's watching this right now, what's your message? Get over here and get checked in. <laughs> we, would in we would encourage him to turn himself in and cooperate with law enforcement. With that announcement two weeks ago, Michael Jackson's future and his career were in serious jeopardy. At 12.05 today, Michael Jackson was taken into custody. He surrendered to authorities and was booked on child molestation charges of lewd and lascivious conduct with a child. What was going through your mind when you're taken into a police station in handcuffs to have a mugshot taken that you know is going to be shown around the world. They did it to try and belittle me, to try and to take away my pride. But I went through the whole system with them. And at the end, I, um, I wanted the public to know that I was OK, even though I was hurting. What, what happened when they arrested you? What did they do to you? They were supposed to go in and just check fingerprints and do the whole thing that they do when they take somebody in. They manhandled me very roughly. My shoulder is dislocated, literally. It's hurting me very badly. I'm in pain all the time. This is, see this arm? This is as far as I can reach it. Same with this side over here. Because of what happened at the police yeah, station? At the, yeah, at the police station. And what they did to, if you, if you saw what they did to my arms, it was very bad what they did. It was very swollen. I don't want to say. But how you'll did... see, you'll see. We were given this photograph said to be taken after Michael Jackson was released on bail. Jackson says the swelling above his wrist is where the police handcuffed him. How, how did they do it? I mean, what physically, what did they do? with the handcuffs, the way they tied them too tight behind my behind back. Behind your back? Yeah, and putting it, they put it in a certain position knowing that it's going to hurt and affect my back. Now I can't move. I, I, it keeps me from sleeping at night. I can't sleep at night. And Jackson says there was more. One time I asked to use the restroom, and they said, sure, it's right around the corner there. Once I went in the restroom, they locked me in there for like 45 minutes. There was doo-doo feces thrown all over the walls, the floor, the ceiling, and it stunk so bad. Then one of the policemen came by the window and he made a sarcastic remark. He said, smell, does it smell good enough for you in there? How do you like the smell? Is it good? 
And I just simply said, it's all right. It's okay. So I just sat there and waited. For 45 minutes? Yeah, for 45 minutes, about 45 minutes. And then, then one cop would uh, come by and say, oh, you'll be out in, in a second. You'll be out in a second. Then there would be another 10 minutes added on, then another 15 minutes added on. They did this on purpose. What about Jackson's allegations? Was he mistreated? Did the police injure his arm and shoulder? Did they lock him in a bathroom for 45 minutes? To get answers to those questions, we made repeated calls to both the sheriff's office and the office of the district attorney. They declined our requests for an interview and referred us to the statement on their website which says about allegations of mistreatment, that is not true. It was the sheriff's deputies who executed the search warrant of the Neverland Ranch. How did you feel when they went into Neverland? I mean, with a search warrant. I mean, what were they looking for? What did you, they you, take? You, my room is a complete wreck. My workers told me, they said, Michael, don't go in your room. They were crying on the phone, my employees. They said, if you saw your room, you would cry. I have stairs that go up to my bed. And they said, you can't even get up the stairs. The room is totally trashed. Mm -hmm. And they had 80 policemen in this room, 80 policemen in one bedroom. That's really overdoing it. Did, and, they, they, and they took knives and cut open my mattresses with knives. Could just cut everything open. Did, did they take anything from Neverland? Uh, I'm not sure what they took. They never gave me a list. But you're saying that they destroyed your property? Yes, they did. And then they, what they did was, they made everybody that work at the property, they locked everybody out of the house. They had the whole house to themselves to do whatever they wanted. And uh, they totally took advantage. They went into areas they weren't supposed to go into, uh, like my office. They didn't have search warrants for those places. And they totally took advantage. And the room is a total, total wreck, they told me. And I don't, I don't, want to, I don't think I want to see it. I'm not ready to see it yet. So you haven't been back there? I've been back there, but not in my bedroom. I won't live there ever again. I'll visit Neverland. It's a house now. It's not a home anymore. I'll only visit there. What time is it? Because I'm hurting. I don't feel good. In a moment, Michael Jackson tells us why he still believes it's appropriate to have children sleep in his bed. And he lashes out at the family whose child he's accused of sexually molesting. More of Michael Jackson's story when we return. This is not the first time Michael Jackson has been accused of child molestation. Ten years ago, he was accused of sexually abusing another young boy. However, after that boy refused to testify, and after Jackson paid the boy's family millions of dollars to settle a civil lawsuit, Jackson was never charged. Although the family in the current case against him has filed no lawsuit and says it does not intend to, Michael Jackson is still suspicious of their motives. Greed, money, somewhere greed got in there and somebody, I, I can't quite say, but it has to do with money. It's Michael Jackson, look what we have here, we get money out of this. That's exactly what happened. What I don't understand is 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 why today and I know you say it's money but who I mean why would he turn around and say Michael Jackson sexually molested me if it weren't true because parents have power over children they feel they have to do what their parents say but money is the root of all evil as you know the love of money is the root of all evil and this is a sweet child and to see him turn like this, this isn't him. This is not him. So you don't think this comes from him, this no, comes from his parents? No, this is not him, mm -hmm. no. I know his heart. Jackson said that even if he could, he would never settle this case, as he did when similar charges were made in 1993. So if you were innocent, why would you pay? I mean, to keep it quiet. I mean, why not go into court and fight for your good name? I'm not allowed to talk on that. Okay. Sure. There we go. Jackson's attorney, Mark Garagos, told me that if I wanted an answer to that question, I'd have to ask him. I mean, remember what happened to him 
10 years ago. He was humiliated. He was, uh, he went through where somebody uh, was examining him, was photographing him, was having him, uh, humiliating him in the worst way in terms of looking at his private parts and photographing his private parts. And, and he was uh, subjected to some of the most just intrusive kinds of things that you could ever imagine. I can only try to put myself into that situation and, and say, look, if money could make that situation go away, uh, maybe that's uh, that was the calculus then. I don't know, and I don't want to second guess it. But but what you end up uh, with is the public perception that this has happened not once, this has happened twice. That young boys have have come forward to accuse him of of sexual molestation over the last ten years, and he has made public comments about how he enjoys sharing his bed with children. Can you understand how the public might feel that, hey, maybe there's something here, there's a lot of smoke? Well, look, there's a, there's a lot of smoke, but I think it's a lot of people, a lot of the people who blow the smoke are, are twisting what's happened. I understand when people say, now there's somebody else who came forward, but I, I think, in all fairness, most people get it. Most people understand that this case is not about anything but money. We asked the mother of the accuser who made these latest allegations to tell us her side of the story, but she declined and would not authorize anyone else to speak on her behalf. That British documentary last February, which you didn't like, yeah, I didn't you, like it. You said in that documentary that, that many children have slept in your bedroom. You said, yes. and I'm going to quote here, why can't you share your bed? The most loving thing to do is to share your bed with, with someone. Yes. As we sit here today, do you still think that it's acceptable to share your bed with children? Of course. Of course, why not? If you're going to be a pedophile, if you're going to be Jack the Ripper, if you're going to be a murderer, it's not a good idea. That I'm not. That's how we were raised. And I, n I didn't sleep in the bed with the child. Even if I did, it's okay. I slept on the floor. I gave the bed to the child. But given all that you've been through, yeah. given the allegations, given yeah. the innuendo, why would you put yourself in a position where something like this could happen again? Well, I'm always more cautious, but I would never stop helping and loving people the way Jesus said to. He said, continue to love, always love, bring on the children, imitate the children, not childish, but childlike. That may sound naive, but Jackson attorney Mark Garrigo says they did take precautions. They were at all times during that uh, February 7th to March 10th period of time. Whenever Michael was there, there was always a third party around. Always. What about the allegation that some kind of intoxicating agent said to be wine was given to this child to make him more pliable? Lud ludicrous. I mean, it's ludicrous on its face. There are in excess of 100 employees at any one time at that ranch. There is full-time security at that ranch. There are people who are there at all times, day and night, 24-7, who are specifically instructed to make sure that people don't do that. The kids are nowhere near alcohol or liquor. Your parent, you've got three children. Yes. Would you allow your children to sleep in the bed with a grown man who was not a relative or to sleep in the bedroom? Sure. If I know that person, trust them, and love them. That's happened many times with me when I was little. Would you, as a parent, allow your children to sleep in the same bedroom with someone who has the suspicions and allegations that have been made against you and about you today? Would you allow that? Someone... If you knew someone who had the I'm same a, kind of allegations. Yeah, I know that exactly what you're saying. You. Would you let your children, My children sleep in that man's bedroom? Mm, if, I, if I knew the person personally, because I know how the press is, I know how people can twist the truth. If I knew the person personally, absolutely yes. Mm. Absolutely. I wouldn't have a problem with it. Do, do, do you know how this looks to a lot of people? I mean, do you understand that? How does what look? How the fact that you... No, why people think sex. Mm -hmm. They're thinking sex. My mind doesn't run that way. When I see children, I see the face of God. That's why I love them so much. That's what I see. 
Do you know any other man your age, a 45-year-old man, who shares his bedroom with children? Of course. Not for sex. No, that's wrong. Well, let me, let me say, from my perspective, my experience, I don't know any 45-year-old men who are not relatives of the children who share their bedroom with other children. Well, what's wrong with sharing your bed? I didn't say I slept in the bed. Even if I did sleep in the bed, it's okay. I am not going to do anything sexual to a child. It's not where my heart is. I would slip my wrist first. I would never do anything like that. But That's not Michael Jackson, I'm sorry. That's it, someone else. And the Michael Jackson of today, while his latest didn't crack the top ten. What, what has this done to your career? What has it, what has it done to what my career? What has it done to your career? In what way? How has it impacted you, you know, my album, touring, record sales? My album's sale? number one all over the world. All over the world. America's the only one because I, I don't want to say too much. But it's not number one in the United States. It's conspiracy, yeah. I don't want to say too much. I'm done. I don't want to say much because I'm hurting. I'm really hurting. Before Michael Jackson's attorney stopped the interview, we were able to ask him one last question. Michael, what would you say to y your fans who have supported you through all of this and, and who today, some of them might have questions. What would you say to them? Well, I would tell them I love them very much. And I, I um, they've learned about me and know about me from a distance. But if you really want to know about me, there's a song I wrote, which is the most honest song I've ever written. It's the most autobiographical song I've ever written. It's called Childhood. And thank you for your support, the fans around the world. I love you with all my heart. And I love them dearly, all over the world. Michael Jackson will make his first appearance in court on January 16th when he is arraigned. He is expected to plead not guilty.